Hey YouTube, so today we're going to tell you about this Volkswagen here. You notice the temperature hand is um, is flashing and um, check engine light is on. I just started this vehicle up from a cold start and shortly after I started up the temperature hand came on. So I know the car's not hot or anything, but um, it obviously has a problem because the temperature hand is rising up. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you what causes that problem. We're going to show you how to fix that problem. and. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, at the end, post, chat, comment, but hopefully I'll answer all your questions during this video. Again, I cut the vehicle off, so we're going to start it up, and I'll show you that again. Okay. Car's not hot. One of those preliminary checks when you first turn the car on, and one of those checks is this temperature thing. And you'll notice that in a minute it's going to start flashing. Alright, and of course the other light is the seatbelt light, and then we have the check engine light. So the first thing we want to do is um, obviously turn the car off. We're going to leave it on in the on position so that we can uh, scan it with the scanner. Let me get the scanner, and we'll check and see what the engine code is. Okay, so on this VW, you find your OBD connector is located up under the dash. Um, I'll go ahead and plug this in. Okay, so we plug that in, and that comes over here to our scanner. And at this point, we'll scan the car to see what's going on there. This particular scanner I'm using is the Bosch scanner. It really doesn't matter which one you use. This just happens to be the one that um, I purchased. I kind of like it. Uh, very versatile. Not as fast as I would like it to be, um, but actually it also depends on the type of car too. All right, so this is a 2008 Volkswagen Beetle with a 2.5 motor. All right, we'll get rid of some of this other stuff we have in here. All right, so now it's going to read it, and you'll notice we have two codes. And the code is a P2181 cooling system performance. It's pending and it has been confirmed. Pending, confirmed. Cooling system performance, P2181. So, for those of you who don't know what that code is, you want to go and look that code up and find out. For those of you that do know what the code is, I would say skip this part, but I want you to continue watching the video to see how to figure this out. Alright, so we'll go ahead to the main computer and we'll look that code up for those of you who don't know. Okay, so this is on the 06 Volkswagen, new Beetle. The code is P2181 and that will pull up cooling system performance, P2181. Check engine cooling temperature sensor. Uh, engine coolant temperature sensor, checking the coolant pump and thermostat refers to the repair information. Oftentimes what you'll find is the sensor will be good, but the thermostat will be bad. All right. Uh, electronic coolant temperature too low after sufficient mass airflow interval. Um, so you go through these procedures and you figure out what the issue is. First, I would recommend you test the engine coolant temperature sensor because that might be what your problem is. You can do that with the little tool that I just used. It'll actually um, give you an engine coolant temperature if it's working. If it's not working, it'll probably say zero or just won't change. All right. If that is not the case, then you want to look into changing your thermostat. All right. Um, <clears throat> and then the rest of this kind of gives you the conditions for setting the uh, check engine light to give you the code P2181. So that's why your your um, coolant temperature light is flashing on and off because of the P2181 code. And once you check these two minor things here, you should be good to go. Now right here, engine coolant temperature sensor one checking. A quick here, of course, is going to give me, you know, what I need to do, how to do it. Um, I didn't really want to plug the program that I'm using, but for those of you who know it, uh, you go ahead and, you know, try it out. For those of you who don't need to know it, this is the what you need. 
All right, <laughs> so quick little blurb there. Just wanted to help those of you out who are having little issues with this type of car. Any questions, comments, please post chat. And until next time. Okay, so we can find out what's going on with the car um, diagnostically by hitting the data string. We'll go to view data. And what this will do is pull up all the little sensors and stuff that um, the car reads. And in this particular case, this one has 329 of them. And then you want to look at the Empire Data List. Now, I'm not going to go over this whole list and explain all of the little icons to you. Instead, I'm going to go down to the one that we need. All right. This one here is a catalytic converter temperature, but you don't want that one. You want the engine temperature. Coolant temperature, there we go, 52, 52. All right, so then what you want to do is start the car and see if this um, raises up. This is going to graph the parameter of the coolant temperature sensor. Didn't really want to graph it. We'll go back and you know, we'll just look at it. We can visually see if it's working or not. You know, this is up to 55, 57. Now this thing should be rising in increments of, um, I believe the direction said one degree, um, basically like a degree per few seconds. So, and as you can see, stopped at 59 oh, 61 there we go so it's a little slow in reacting but it is working so we know that that's not the issue for our coolant temperature light flashing what could what the issue seems to be is the thermostat is stuck open and it's not allowing the car to warm up as fast as it's supposed to. Remember that direction I said it's supposed to be like one degree per second. And look at there, it just dropped down. It went up to 63, then dropped down to 61. And now it's not even moving. So obviously the thermostat isn't working because if it was working, the temperature would continue to go up. And now it's actually cooling down. So that's a good indication of an open thermostat. So folks, we're going to take this step a lot farther because we're going to replace the thermostat on this car. Unfortunately, to replace the thermostat on this particular vehicle, you've got to put the car in service mode because this is a Volkswagen Beetle. You've got to remove the fenders, the headlights, the front bumper cover, the other headlight, the other fender. Then you've got the radiator assembly in here that you've got to actually move forward so that you can get to it. So this video is going to be rather interesting, rather long, but in the end we'll have the car fixed and running. And um, This is a Volkswagen, actually a 2008. It's a, um, I love that sticker. <laughs> it's got the 2.5 motor in it, but the problem is, and as you can see, it's still stuck on 61 there car's running and it's not warming up at all so that's a very good indicator that the thermostat is stuck open so but to change the thermostat you've got to take the intake manifold off in order to get to the intake manifold off you got to take all this out and you got to move this forward so that you can get your hands down in there and get to the bolts now about the easiest portion of this job is just removing that cover Okay. Now that that cover's removed, it gets you a little bit closer in there, but you still have to 
put the car in service position. We'll go through and show you that in just a second. We'll cut this off and uh, get ready to tear this thing apart. All right, so the first thing we're going to do before we get started on this job is we're going to drain the antifreeze out of the vehicle. Um, some people I know probably, can you reuse the antifreeze? It's kind of up to you, but I would recommend if you're going to go through the trouble of draining this stuff out and it's got some years or mileage on the vehicle, I would recommend just go ahead and putting some new antifreeze in there because antifreeze does break down over time. Now to get this out, basically, it's a little knob here that I turn. All right, on this particular one, it's different on different cars, but as you can see there, you just take and twist that and, and you pull it out. You don't pull it out too far, it'll shoot out this end here. And again, we're trying to catch it. Um, so we're not going to go too fast. So. All right, we'll let that drain and then we'll be right back. Now that we've got the radiator drain, um, the next step we're going to do is we're going to replace the thermostat here as I told you and I wanted to show you where it was located if we can get the camera and some light on it it's buried way up in there and there's a black housing on it I don't know if we can see the get the right camera angle here but it's buried up in there um, if you look very, right in the back back there um, there's a hose, I don't know if we can get this on camera or not, but either way, it's up in there. So, um, when you're looking at the procedure for it, Volkswagen recommends that you pull the front fascia off, the front bumper, the headlights, all this cover over here. Of course, you have to drain the radiator, and then they say go ahead and disconnect this stuff, disconnect the front bumper brackets, and pull all this forward. Now, that's a lot of work, not to mention you're, you know, basically moving part of the body of the car, and, you know, you want to make sure you get that back right, but I've discovered a way in which you can do this a little bit faster, a little bit easier, you don't have to take off as much stuff, and we're going to do it. All right, so now we've got our antifreeze drained out of this uh, new Beetle. Um, like I said, we're going to change the thermostat, but I'm going to show you a quick little neat trick that's going to help you out and keep you from having to pull that front fascia off that I was telling you about. So if you got access and you can lift the car up on a lift, it makes it easier, but there's where well, we have the drain. But if you come back here and look at this, this is your, um, like, it's, it's like a motor mount. Um, I think they call it like a torque, torque strut mount, torque, torque mount, something like that, strut mount. But what happens is this right here keeps the motor from rocking in the car. So what you want to do, is you want to remove that bolt, that bolt, that bolt, and that bolt, or just that bolt, that bolt. Basically, you want to take this bar off here. And what that allows it to happen is for the motor to rock back and forth. So, with it rocking, you're going to get more space. You rock it back, you get more space at the top for us to take this intake off that I was telling you about. So, we're going to take that off, and then I'll show you what I mean by the rocking and the extra space there. Alright, see that? Now with that out disconnected, the motor can actually rock. See that rocking action there? Alright. Now, with me being able to rock this motor back and forth, when I let it down, we'll rock it back. And that way we'll have full access to the to the um, intake manifold or extra space to get the intake manifold off. Now we have the um, that torque strut loose at the bottom, or motor mount loose at the bottom. You see how we can rock, get some extra space there. Now we'll take the uh, tubing off, this tubing here, and then that'll give us access here. We'll disconnect all of our wiring harnesses here, here, here. We're going to disconnect your fuel injectors. These rails will actually lift up off of there real, good one, real easy once you disconnect that. Um, and then you'll disconnect this piece here to pull that forward. And then we'll be able to disconnect the bolts down there. Um, and then finally we'll remove the intake manifold and we'll have full access to the thermostat housing that's located below that.
So I'm gonna get to moving that off and we'll come back shortly. So these hoses here are very easy to get off. You get that off, you see it's got the little um, little gnarled edge there for you to squeeze. And basically you just squeeze and pull. And when you squeeze that, it opens the circle up so that you can pull it. Now you will need some pliers or something to squeeze this clamp here to pull that off. Um, we'll get that right quick. You want to remove your throttle body, but to, before you remove the four bolts, four star bolts here, there's two down there also. You'll want to remove the vacuum hose here. Um, just go over here. Simply the connector, you just push that in. Alright, you push that connector in. And you'll notice that as you push it in, it this is the lock. You push this lock in and it'll straighten it up so that you can actually pull that up off of this lip. And you'll feed it under this hose here pull it up under that because this hose actually goes over top of that you feed it up under there pull it loose and just let that dangle now you can take the four bolts and take that loose also there is a, another wire connection down there you might need to get a screwdriver or something push that little tab back back there and push that off and now you can take this throttle body off Four bolts to take out. These are a T30. One there. One below. I've already taken one of the lower ones out. recommend that you pull your bolts out send them off to the side there's four of them and they're different from the rest of the bolts but you definitely don't want to lose those bolts and then you boom pull it off and pick that thing right up and sit it out of your way now I have a habit of sitting my stuff like right up here where I'm going to be um, one note about that just be careful that you don't put it slam it down hard and crack your windshield or anything now Here's your intake. Uh, you do have a few vacuum hoses. We're going to take this vacuum hose loose here. Remember, you squeeze that in there and pull. Sometimes it'll be a little tough, especially the ones that get heated up. Can't do it filming and filming and uh, trying to pull it. So I'm going to stop filming and get those off. Then we're going to disconnect our wiring connectors there. And then that'll give us access to our other bolts. After you get your wiring harnesses disconnected, your fuel injector wiring harness, and the vacuum line, you'll want to use a T20 um, star drive um, like this. Um, the ratchet usually is going to be a little too big, so you'll want one like that. You just harness by hand. There's two of these um, T20 star bolts here. The biggest thing is just make sure you don't drop them after you pull them out. So if you have a magnetic tip on your driver, that really helps to make it a lot easier. All right, I think I missed that shot there, but <laughs> we'll go over here and do the other one. You see it's down in there. Um, you take your tool. Pull that second bolt out. And once you re remove those two bolts, you'll now be able to pull the fuel injector rail up. Oh, and I dropped that bolt. The very thing I told you not to do. <laughs> Moving too fast. All right, as you can see, that'll come up. Now, at this point, if you have any open sources of flame or fire, <laughs> might want to put those out before you start this process um, because this is well fuel or straight gasoline that comes through these and like if one of those injectors comes off and it's going to start leaking gas all right so now that we have that out of the way as you can see you got your intake manifold bolts you can get to real easily 
Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five at the top. And uh, I think there's a couple of them hidden at the bottom. So we'll get those out. And then we should be able to uh, eventually lift this manifold up out of here. Now one thing that you may need to do is remove this rail here. Um, you will need a specialized BMW, I mean not BMW, Volkswagen spline sockets to get that out. They do sell that set at like O'Reilly if you don't have a set of those or any good auto parts store. Alright, so we're going to get that and pull that out and we'll be right back. So continuing on with this project, um, you'll disconnect this wiring harness here to simply lift from here from here to simply lift that out. It's got tabs on the bottom so that you can push it back in. Also, there's a wire connector down at the bottom that you'll um, disconnect down at the bottom. And we'll see that there. Um, we'll disconnect that wire connector there. We've already got that done. Um, next step you want to do is you'll need a um, the 12 point sockets. Um, Excuse me, the triple square bit set, as they call it, the professional name for it. Um, you'll find these will be used on like BMWs, Audis, and especially Volkswagen. Love to use this type of uh, socket on there. You'll need that to remove these two um, bolts here. All right, there's two of them. Uh, the size you'll need is a, a metric 10. For those of you who don't want to go out and get the whole set uh, for this job, you'll need a metric 10 there. Uh, and what that will do is release that rail and allow you to move that rail. And then you'll have better access to your um, intake manifold bolts. So we're going to go ahead and remove that rail and then we'll be right back. Okay, so if you remove those two bolts there, you'll be able to pick this whole rail up here, and it just simply slides out. Okay, and you'll work it out of there. And just put it up out of the way for the time being. Now you have better access to your intake manifold bolts without that rail being in the way. Um, be easier for you to use your tool. We're going to start on those bolts next and um, then we'll lift that thing out of there. Okay, so here comes the tricky part of this. As you see, we've got all the other intake manifold bolts out. Except for there's one that's way down here in this hole. Let me see if I can put some light onto it. And you have to go through that hole to get to the bolt in there. But you got to have a long, thin extension. And you'll also going to need... Um, you can get to this one by going through. But through here, you've got to go through this hole. So, you're going to need a long quarter inch extension. And you're going to need a 6 millimeter hex head socket to get that in there. Alright, so again, find you a 6 millimeter hex head, either really, really long, or get you a quarter, um, a long quarter extension with a quarter drive with a six millimeter head on it and you should be able to get that out of there okay so i went ahead and pulled that bolt out and this is um 
but you're gonna need if you don't have the tool to do that. Basically it's two extensions. These extensions are magnetic and then you have the six millimeter Torx head bit that goes in there. And that will work perfectly in the hole. I tried a quarter inch socket and extension and that just wouldn't work. So you'll need something really small to get down in there. All right, so once you get that bolt removed, then this whole manifold, as you can see, will move. Now, you will need to disconnect this hose here. You can either disconnect it from this clamp, or you can disconnect it back here. Again, you have the squeeze connector. You just squeeze it, pull it up, but you'll have to feed that intake manifold up. Of course, you're gonna feed it up out of the way. Um, also, here, there's like a little collar piece. You basically just take a screwdriver and like twist it around and push it down and it'll slide up out of the way. So now as you can see, this intake is loose. We gotta get that bolt out of there. It will make it a little bit easier to move. I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way and um, uh, then I'll come back and show you the thermostat. Actually, I have a better idea. I'm just going to go ahead and show you how easy it is to take this uh, this intake manifold off. All right. Now, the main thing is get down here and you get this collar pushed down out of the way. And, of course, you have your bolts out. But then, if you just work it, and you can actually work it with one hand, okay, you'll push it down, actually, kind of pull it forward. The main thing, like I say, make sure this is not in the way. This hose piece, if it's in the way, it's going to catch. So you'll pull that forward like so. You might want to use some string. Alright, pull that forward. And voila, your intake is out. Now you will need to, if you didn't take this hose off over here, we'll need to be on the inside of the wiring harness. Alright. Twist and voila, up out of the way. Those people, we still have the whole car assembled, the front end on there. Um, I know the manual says I still have that disconnected over there. So I'm actually just going to sit this to the side because you really don't need to disconnect it. You could actually just sit it to the side and now you have access to your thermostat down there. You'll notice you've got two star bolts. Uh, you pull that out and uh, the thermostat is right there. So I'm going to get the uh, size for you and I'll tell you what size that is. But as you can see, this is a pretty simple, straightforward job. Now, one thing I would recommend is, is you see these seals here? These seals do need to be replaced. Um, also, uh, go ahead and take your intake off and clean it up. I mean, like as you can see, you've got some oil there. There's oil down, built down in these holes. You might want to go ahead and clean that out. It's just going to let your car run better. Um, this car has some miles on it. And, that's why it's got oil blow by and of course then again I don't know how the owner is actually taking care of the motor um, but it looks rather clean but um, <clears throat> that's just over time usage all right so I'll get the tools for the thermostat and we'll be right back I'll put some more light down there so you can see it too okay as you can see down here these um, are hex bit sockets uh, star drives I call them um, and it's going to be a 30. Um, you want a T30 socket for that. Again, you want a T30. Now you'll notice the oil dipstick tube is kind of in the way, it prevents access to that screw. Simply move it out of the way. Okay. You could take it out if you wanted to. There's like an O-ring down there in the bottom. I can't really get any light down there on that. You could take it out if you wanted to, but then that creates more job as you have to do but if you just move it to the side maybe use like a short wobble extension that you can get in there to those two bolts I'm going to take these two bolts out and uh, I'll show you the thermostat all right so we have those two bolts out now um, in the very beginning of this video the first thing I tell you to do is go ahead and drain the radiator um, that way you wouldn't have a lot of antifreeze coming out of this hole when you pull it back um, easily um, if you haven't drained the antifreeze, go ahead and drain the antifreeze at this point. Otherwise, you're going to make a mess. Uh, some of you don't care, but you know, you don't want any of your animals and stuff like that to ingest any antifreeze. It is dangerous and it can kill them. Uh, so, anyway, uh, back to this. Um, this has an O-ring on it. Gently 
work it out, pull it out. And as you can see, you still gonna have a little bit drain out that was in the motor. Um, you can get a catch pan under there and catch that. And, um, or you can just let it flow all out. It's not gonna be that much. This is the thermostat here. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and get the new part, put it back in. The Putting it back together is basically the reverse of all the steps I told you. Um, and as you can see, you've got plenty of room to get down in there. Um, also, notice if you need more room with that um, motor strut removed at the bottom, you can wobble it back and forth. But actually, I mean, you got pretty good room. One, one tip that I do want to say is go ahead and pull this up so that when you're putting it back together, uh, go ahead and pull that up when you're putting it back together. You don't have to reach your hand down there and lock that in. Um, as you can see how hard it is, it's going to lock in anyway. But um, pull that collar up, and that way you can actually lock it back in to where it goes on this intake. So, uh, next step. Uh, before putting it together also like I said replace those seals there um, clean it up um, We use some cleaner here. It'll be nice and clean and polished and um, We're going to get the new parts put it back together um, I don't think you necessarily need to see me putting it back together unless you uh, um, <laughs> Unless you miss something on the tear down of this vehicle if you have any questions or comments, please post chat subscribe uh, this was done as a request from a viewer. I hope this helps you out a lot. Um, I know you told me you said something about tearing the front of the car off. And like I say, you do not have to tear the front of the car off just to change the thermostat on a new Beetle. This is the new Beetle uh, 2008 with a 2.5 liter motor. And as you can see, we were gotten there and there's the thermostat housing and um, this is the fast quick easy way of doing it all right until next time have a great day okay so here's your original thermostat that came out of the car and uh, you'll notice it's made in germany um, it's got the vw volkswagen stamp on it this particular customer provided their own part um, uh, AutoZone and for those of you that need a part number for that thermostat there it is now you'll notice once you open the box here that you have the thermostat but the thermostat is a little bit different in design obviously they can't copy you know for copyright thing purposes but um, you notice the seal on this is made onto it um, as far as the aftermarket part, they've given you two little seals. And I know some of you are probably like, well, how are you going to put that on that? That, you know, that's a flat edge. Um, do you glue it on, etc., etc.? No, that's not what you do. If you come over here and look down into your housing here, there's a lip inside there. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that seal. It's got a little, you see those little catch pieces on there, those little tabs. And you'll take that seal and you're going to stick it down into that groove that is in there. It might take you a few little tries, but you should be able to do it with one hand. So you'll push that all the way in. Now, notice how I'm, I'm kind of like, oh, let me just get back on camera. All right, notice how I'm kind of like, like just kind of pushing it in with my finger. You don't want to like grab a place and then like pull your finger around and slide it around like that. Cause A, you can cut your finger just in case there's something sharp, but also you run the risk of stretching that seal. You don't want to stretch the seal. So once you have that in, the thermostat will go in like, this okay now you'll find it easier that's how that drops down you'll find it easier to take your thermostat and put it into the front of the housing 
like so. That way it'll fit down in there flush. Before you put that thermostat in there, you want to change this seal here. Okay, see that O-ring there? You want to change that out. That's why they give you the new O-ring. All right, I can't really do that with two hands, with one hand, so I'm gonna pause the video here and change that out, then we'll put this back together. Oh yeah, that's how we got this cleaned up right here. All right, see how that surface is nice and clean? Now that's ready for the new gaskets. Well, in this, in this case, the new seals. Alright, we're gonna put that on. We'll be right back. I wanted to add a quick little note here. When adding or when replacing your intake manifold back in here, one thing that you want to do is that little tool that we use for the bolt there. You want to go ahead and stick that in there and lock that bolt in um, because you can't stick this bolt through the hole because the head on it will get stuck. So, what I recommend you do is go ahead and feed that bolt in and then stick your tool in there and hold it in there in place and then maneuver your intake back in place and once you get up in place you can go ahead and um, secure that bolt first and it'll actually hold it intake hold the intake in place too while you replace the other bolts now for those of you that are concerned with losing this bolt or dropping this bolt down I do recommend that you get like a little bit of silicone and put on the end of it and that way it'll make it a little sticky <clears throat> Um, just a little dab um, and stick that in there and then that will hold the bolt and keep it from falling off because if you don't do that as you see it, it will fall off so get your little silicone stick on the end of your tool or in the end of the bolt head and then stick it through there connect it and then install your intake mount so now that we have this all back together we just added our antifreeze in there let's pull Come up here and test the car. Of course, you will have to clear the engine code that we saw earlier. Um, we'll go ahead and start the vehicle up. And boom! Lights out. There you go. If you have any questions or comments, if you need help with this, please post, chat, subscribe. Thanks. Until next time, YouTube. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps you out.